In this video, I'll be going over how to find domain of a function. The domain of the function is the x value of a function. Here is an example of a linear function. What is the domain of this function? The x value in this case could be any number from negative infinity all the way to positive infinity. So in this case, the domain will be negative infinity to positive infinity. What about a quadratic function? In this case, we can also plug in any number from any negative value to any positive value. So the domain will also be negative infinity to positive infinity. Now what about a polynomial? For the x value here, we can also apply any number in the negative value and positive value and it will be whole valid. So therefore, the domain is also negative infinity to positive infinity. Now here's an example for rational function. When we have a fraction, we need to pay attention to the denominator because they cannot be zero. So in this case, x minus 4 cannot be 0. And if we were to solve this, x cannot be 4. And because if we were to plug in the 4 here, the denominator would be 0 and undefined. And so therefore we know that x cannot be 4. And when we write the interval notation, 4 will be an open circle. And any value here and here will work. So therefore, the domain will be written as negative infinity to 4 union and then 4 to infinity. Here's another rational function. Look at this fraction. We can see that the numerator could be any value The numerator x value could be any number. So we pay attention to the denominator here. So it would be x squared minus 7x plus 10. And to solve this, we will take 10 and 5 and 2. And since we need to satisfy the negative 7 when combined, this will become negative 5 and negative 2 and this cannot be 0. Otherwise, it will be undefined. So, x minus 5, x minus 2 cannot be 0. And then it will be written as such. Okay, and then when we are writing out the interval notation, we have 2 and 5, both open circle. And we have any value here that can all be held true. So the domain of this we written as negative infinity to 2 which defines this area here union 2 to 5 which is this portion here then 5 infinity which would be this portion here. and so that will be your answer now here's another one again we can see that the function here we could apply any value into x and it will be valid. So pay attention to the denominator here. x squared plus 9 cannot be 0. And then if we solve for this, we will have x cannot be negative 9. Now when you square a number, you will always get a positive number and not a negative. So x squared can never be negative 9. 
and we can try this out by simply placing 3, the positive 3, as x, and we'll get positive 9. If we put negative 3, we will still get a positive 9. So therefore, the denominator will never be 0 in this case. And because of that, any number will work in this function. And so we will write the domain as negative infinity to infinity. That's the answer. Now here's the square root problem. For this equation, we look at the x minus 9, the inside portion of the square root. And we know that x minus 9 can be 0 or greater than 0. And so x would be greater or equal to 9. And so when we're writing out the interval notation, we will have 9 but with a solid circle and this is going this direction. And when we write a domain, we will use bracket 9. The bracket here is important because the 9 is included and then infinity. So the only thing here that we need to be more careful about is the bracket here. And that's your answer. Now here's another square root problem. So from here we can see that x squared minus 7x plus 10 could be greater or equal to 0. And if we were to solve this, we would have a 10 and we know that we can be 5 and 2 and we need to also satisfy the negative 7 so it will be negative 5 and negative 2. So then we will rewrite it as follows. And after further solving this, And now for the interval notation. We have 2 and then we have 5. And in this case, both of them will be solid circle. Whenever we have two circles on the interval notation, we want to do a sign test. The sign test would tell us which region the number could fall in. So we, we have this region here, we have this region here, and we have this region here. And the sign test basically does give us either a positive value or a negative value. So here, we're going to try the number 6 between 2 and 5. We're going to try 3, and between 2 and negative infinity, I'll we'll try 1. And so what we're doing is simply plug in the number as x, and see if it comes to positive value or negative value. So if you plug in 1 as x, we will get a negative value here. and if we plug in 1 at this x value, we also get a negative value. So negative times negative give us a positive value. So that this tells me that this region, this region is positive. Now let's try the 3. So if you plug in the 3 here, we will again come up with a negative. If you plug in 3 here, we will have a positive. So positive times negative is a negative value. So here is negative. And if we do the same for 6, we plug it in here, we get a positive value. And if we plug in here, we also get a positive value. So positive times positive is positive. So this region here will be a positive value. 
So by looking at this, we know that this region does not apply because it's a negative value. So when we write the domain, it will be something like this. Negative infinity to 2. And make sure that we have this bracket here because the 2 is a solid circle. And the union. And then another bracket because the 5 is solid circle. Infinity. And that is the answer. Now what if you have a square root in the fraction? Here is an example. In this example, notice how the square root is in the denominator. And the denominator, we need to make sure it does not become 0. So this tells us x minus 5 is greater than 0. But if the square root is actually in the numerator, it would be greater or equal to 0. But in this case, it's in the denominator, so we would write it as x minus 5 greater than 0. So if we solve for this, this would be x is greater than 5. Interval notation would look something like this. we we'll just have a 5 circle and go in this direction. So the domain would simply be d5 to infinity. And there's no bracket because this is an open circle and not a solid circle. Now let's try one where the square root is in the numerator. So for this example, x minus 7 would then be greater or equal to 0. Because it's fine for, the, for it to be 0 in the numerator, but it's not okay in the denominator. So if we were to solve for this, it would be x greater or equal to 7. And for the denominator, x squared minus 36 cannot be 0 because it's in the denominator. And if we were to solve this, x minus 6, x plus 6. So then we will end up with x cannot be 6 and x cannot be negative 6. So for the interval notation, negative 6, 6, and 7. And this will be open circle. And uh, 7 will be a solid circle. Going this direction. And when we have two functions, which is the top, the numerator, the denominator, we need to do an intersection, which means that we need to we need to graph the interval notation in a way where it holds true for both functions. The numerator function says x greater or equal to 7, and the denominator portion says x cannot be 6 and x cannot be negative 6. And in order for them to be all be held true, it tells us that this is the only region that will work. Therefore, the domain has to be bracket 7 because of the solid circle and infinity. And that is the answer. Now here's another example with square root on both the numerator and the denominator. So we'll first look at the numerator of x plus 5 and this could be greater or equal to 0. So x has to be greater or equal to negative 5. So that's for this, the top function. And for the denominator function, 
x squared minus 36. It has to be greater than 0, or else it will be undefined. So, again, x minus 6, x plus 6. So we know x cannot be 6, and x cannot be negative 6. For the interval notation of the numerator, it looks something like this. And the interval notation for the denominator, it will look something like this. When we have an interval notation with two circles, we need to do the sign test. So we're going to plug in numbers and see if it result in positive or negative number. Here. Okay, so we'll try 7 here. We'll try 4 here. And for this region, we'll try negative 7. So the first one was with, and what we're going to do is plug in the number and see what we get. In this example, negative 7, we're going to plug into the x and we'll get a negative number. We plug in negative 7 here, we'll still get a negative number. And negative times negative is positive. So this region here, we have a positive. Now let's try this region here. So here we're gonna plug in 4. Here, 4 minus 6 is negative 2. So we get a negative number. And if you plug in the 4 here, we get a positive number. So negative times positive is negative. So we get a negative region here. Now for this region here, we'll plug in the 7. So 7 minus 6, get a positive number. 7 plus 6, also a positive number. So therefore, this region is also positive. So after looking at this, we know that the region that doesn't apply would be here. And the last step would just be combining the two interval notation into one. So here we have 6, six open circle, negative 6, open circle, and we know that the region here is positive, and the region here is positive, and then we have a negative 5 from here, so it will apply here, and this one is a solid circle going this direction. Now how can we make it? Now for intersection, it means that, means that it needs to be held true for both functions. So we already established from previously that this region doesn't work and that region is here so for the the numerator function of x greater or equal to negative 5 it tells us that this region here does not apply and since it needs to be held true for both functions that means that this region also doesn't apply so the only, the only ones that will work would then be here because it's true for both of the functions. And therefore, the domain will be written as 6 infinity. 
and that is the answer. So these are examples of how you would find domain of linear, quadratic, polynomial, rational, and square root functions. Thank you for watching.